In this episode of The Suit Maker, we are making a stop in Dubai to record some podcasts with our clients. And then we're heading off to India, where we're acquiring some production lines for manufacturing and wholesale. Welcome to this episode of The Suit Maker. We have offices in over 20 countries across the world. So on our way to India, we decided to stop at one of these offices on our layover in Dubai. And while doing that, we also recorded a couple of podcasts with some of our top clients. Uh, You can find these podcasts right here on our channel. After the podcast, our Dubai colleagues took us out on the town. We are in the Dubai city of gold. This is where they sell gold. So you'll see a lot of gold being sold. Uh, Anna from our office took us over here. Uh, because uh, she thinks that we buy gold uh, during our off hours, which is exactly right. That's exactly what we do. Let's go buy some gold. I want to show you guys the newest LGFG vest collection. 24 karat pure gold. Weighs about 30 pounds. If you want to accessorize your custom suit, a great way to do it is with a lot of gold. So wear that LGFG pinstripe, you know, look sharp, look like a boss. And then wear like golden armbands and golden chest pieces. I mean, we got it all here. And the next morning, we were on our way to India with the first stop in the city of Madurai. We are now in Madurai, India. We have a production facility uh, that we've acquired and partnered with uh, for some of our wholesale business and some of our Uh, stitching work, some of the very uh, labor-intensive stitching work as we're increasing volume. We're also supplying about 80 retail stores, uh, very high-end retail stores that are always looking to expand production. Uh, So we're visiting uh, some partners here for that. I have a small present for you from Estonia the unique factors about this production facility. So first of all, some of the world's biggest brands manufacture here, and I'm not really supposed to say brands, but uh, I'm talking about the largest, most famous suit brands uh, have some production here. The largest, most famous companies that produce like downfill jackets for winter in Canada, in Japan, they're all here, okay? Uh, We have the exclusivity of this facility to the custom production and bespoke floor. We are exclusively the, the people and the only company that set that up here uh, in the highest end facility. Linings, but the, uh, and then up here all the different canvases. Yeah. If we're not sure of the weight of the cloth, we weigh it. So different ways of cloth have different canvases inside. Yes. It's funny, I should know this by now, but the different cloth weights, and there's a weighing machine, would have a different canvas used for the garment. So here's a question for Edward. So let's say you're going to a lower end production line. Would the canvas just be the same for every cloth? Yeah, probably be, probably wouldn't even be canvas. It'll be just fused onto, yeah. onto the cloth straight away. So okay. there's no lashing. A bit, a bit so why do you need a different weight of canvas for every uh, for every different weight of cloth? Well, you don't want the, you, you you want the cloth to form the garment, yeah. not the interlinings and the linings to form the garment. Otherwise, it's the weight of the canvas and the linings 
drag the cloth down. So the canvas on a linen suit would be different from the canvas on the flannel suit. Yeah, yeah. You want you you, you want it just the handle to be soft, yeah. but you want the cloth to express the suit. Very cool. So check it out, Henry. This is really cool because remember when we did the suit maker last time, um, we went to the cloth uh, finisher and then they do a fabric check after weaving. And then the mill will receive the cloth. In that case, it was Dorme. They would receive the cloth and do a fabric check on it again. And then before we cut and sew the suit, there's a fabric testing machine here on site as well at the facility. So check in again. So you know what? You want to talk about like just so many repeated controls to check the quality to make sure that our client receives a product that's like really top of the line, like really no compromise on that. We say eight weeks for production, right? We put something in production. Typically, we get it a lot sooner than that. But what the reason we say eight weeks is, let's say, you know, we do so many quality control checks. And so even though a garment might really only take four weeks, we say eight weeks because we'll actually reorder the cloth again. We'll take the cost and we'll buy it again if it doesn't meet our standards. But that's our guarantee to you that you are receiving perfection from us. Um, and that's uh, what this machine will audit again. How much does a machine like that cost? $140,000. We're only the second factory in India that has this. Nobody else has it. The first one. It uses heat and beating to pre-shrink the cloth. Okay. So what you would get if you just fuse the uh, or press the garment, that shrinkage is nullified here. Okay. And whatever we do later, the garment doesn't shrink. That's interesting because you would think the merchant that sells the cloth already has gone through this process. It's a process, sure. but it's not like 100% accurate. Right. And we can't leave that margin for error. Because if the mill missed something on the QC, then we have to remake the garment from scratch because the cloth changes. We allow very minimal variation. $140,000 investment into your, into your happiness. This entire room is dedicated to trims and finishes, which means basically buttons. So we have a, an entire room for all the different buttons. That's right. The button room. And the guy that runs it is named Benjamin. No, <laughs> Benjamin Button. The way that Rolex melts its own gold, we develop our own buttons, so we do everything from the ground up. Look at that, guys. So these are custom made. We custom make our own buttons with our own logo, with our own brand on them. So you can see here, uh, we take zero shortcuts in ensuring that uh, even the tiniest details like the buttons are completely exclusive uh, to us and to our clients. So they're, our clients know they're really buying the best. These ones, the white ones, they're actually one of the most expensive buttons in the world. So one button, uh, one button set can go up to $50, which is kind of expensive for a button, right? This is pretty cool. So our clients know that we're so dedicated to the final product. Like if you get a suit of a certain color, we match the threads on the buttons to that suit so the threads don't stick out, unless you want you know, different threads. So here we have a layout of all the different, these are the stretchy threads. Uh, Guterman is supplying all the best threads, of course, that's where we're getting them from. Uh, even when you're buying like pants, you know, if you want a copper uh, fastener or something that is more silver, for example. So we have the different fasteners here uh, in different colors as well, so that everything on the suit matches consistently. So there's a, a pretty substantial amount of inventory here to make sure uh, that you're getting the finished product that's world-class bespoke tailoring that other brands don't commit to it like we do. I was just asking, like, if it's possible to do real silver yarn, like yarn woven from silver, and it is possible. And that's one of the things I've been talking about for a while is I want our labels to be like on the LGFG label. I wanted that stitch to be with authentic silver yarn. So when we deliver it to our clients, like they see the stitching, how it's shiny around the label, that's real silver. Nobody else does that in the world. And I'm leaving that to you because they asked me to leave it with you to follow up with them. All right. so. Let's make, let's get those silver yarns going, man. Silver yarn is coming. So that for suit maker, for suit maker episode five, we can show the silver yarn production line. So this is, so this is the uh, pattern machine. This is the automated pattern machine. So for example, if we have your pattern on file, you're a client. We just, that goes right from the pattern of the computer and it's automatically in its laser cut here. So that's really cool. Um, but then on the other side, we have the hand cutters, so the actual people that are cutting the pattern by hand. And that's for our bespoke clients, the very highest end. We actually cut everything by hand, not by machine. Um, to give that more authentic 
I mean, really real bespoke experience. So we do have a hand cutting team here for the best master tailors and we have the laser cut machines. The belt underneath there is a $4,000 belt, lasts about six years. These, the lead time to get one of these machines is so long that when uh, we needed a second machine, we bought it at a trade show right off the floor. It was the trade show machine because we needed a machine. Uh, so we didn't have to wait for the wait time. We just came to the trade show, made them an offer they couldn't refuse. So back there, that's a pattern matching machine. Then you have a check suit, right? Like check fabric. And they'll align, you know, like the, the, the panels of the suit. And that machine checks with the cloth before it's stitched that the panels are so aligned so that the checks come out the same and matching. If it's a little bit off, the machine will actually adjust the cloth so that when the pattern is cut, it makes the checks line up. So, so this is quite brilliant. This is a brilliant thing. Check it out, guys. So typically when you have a pattern, you know, you print it out on a piece of paper. Uh, in order to save that paper, in order to increase speed, our patterns are now projected by a projector down onto this table so that we can just place the cloth over the projection instead of the paper. Look at that. That's amazing. There we go. Actually, one of mine. Got myself a warm one. Oh, yeah. Oh, if it wasn't hot enough. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Try the, the, the zipper Ooh, one. Ooh, got a zippy too. Da -da. Thanks, Arjun. how you, ma you keep your C CEO happy. Yeah. You, you make, make him different happy. stuff. <laughs> I, yeah, but I wanted this. And I was like, you guys need to, we need to make this happen. And you made it happen, right? Oh, that's a nice zipper too. Very heavy. I like a heavy zipper because like they don't break as much, you know? Thank you. Thank you. All natural. Wool. No polyester. Five, six hundred different fabric patterns here across various bolts. And I've probably personally sold most of them by now. Just these are perennials. What the per perennial means, like here is a nice Vitali Barbaris perennials. Um, what perennials means is that they're generally always in stock because they're the most popular patterns. So it's going to be your navy solids, charcoals, your you know, black suits, things like that. So spin stripes. We keep not only our perennials, but so under here, these are under collar felts. So these are the best selling felt that we put underneath the back of the collar and the jacket. So we keep them, we bought them up front and we keep them on site to speed up the production process. So we don't have to order a new felt for every order. We keep those on site because those go across different suits and all the, I think the top eight most popular colors we keep right here in the facility. The letters and the punching, we will do it in the separate oh, machines. Fine and we will download into the pen drive and we'll load it into the machine. And it will go according to the order number. Start from it. And you, you can see that numbers. And the display will be next to the screen. That's the fine I know. You know your suit is lucky when its shipping number is. Dun, 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 dun. So this is the roll padding machine. What this does is it draws in the lapel so that it has a, 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 like, like a permanent crease in it and holds it in place. And the needle on the head of this machine goes halfway through the cloth. So it's lashing the canvas to the cloth. These machines are beautiful. They're Strobel, um, a German company with Swiss engineering. It's like having a Rolex watch. So you see it's already put the shape into the lapel. Went in there looking like that, and now it's already got the, the round in it. 
sew it faster, make it better, fuse it right now, makes it stronger, make sure that you measure right now, you cannot make a vest longer. <laughs> If a needle breaks during the stitching process, then we have to find uh, the needle. And the way that we do it is we match it to this uh, container to make sure we have the full needle, right? And if we don't have the full needle, then what we'll do is uh, put each garment that was sewn by that needle through the needle like metal detector so that we can find the needle. If we can't find the needle, those garments don't go out. We, we make them because we cannot risk a garment going out with a needle in it. So in effect, this machine uh, is trained to find little pricks, just like your mother. So this is our effluent treatment plant, and this is where we collect the wastewater from laundry. We use different stages of filtration where we move water through different layers. So the water is collected and the sludge is left to settle at the bottom. The water is then pumped through these pumps to the top of the bio tower. It contains three layers, three stages, where you have sieves and there's bacteria that is held within the sieves. This bacteria treats the water and removes all of the effluent from the water. We have a filtration system where we can remove any loose buttons or thread or whatever comes out of the wash water. That is all separated here. The water is then moved through three different stages where we also neutralize the pH because we wash garments in a slightly acidic medium. So we have to neutralize our pH. Once this process is done, we then have a pressure pump where we add sodium hypochlorite and pressure sand and activated carbon filters. From here, the water is then ready to be discharged to the garden. The sludge that is collected in this process is filter pressed and uh, it's allowed to bake. This goes as raw material for making tiles. So even the sludge is not wasted. And this is how the water is. So this is the raw water that you see down here. Yeah. This is the treated water. So they're doing a pH testing, uh, not only on the water, but also on the garments. So they'll take garments off the production line, cut them into little pieces and test the pH level in the garments because the garments, not only the water, have to reach certain pH levels. And you can tell by the beakers here that I'm really smart. <laughs> Is this water safe to drink? No. Can you call a doctor, please? <laughs> We're also working on mechanisms where we can reuse the water back into washing, mm. plus also working on mechanisms where we reduce the amount of water that we consume. And then the water that goes into the garden uh, is used to plant trees. Yes. And we're gonna plant the tree. is interesting you know as we're talking about recycling water and having a zero waste production facility which you've seen like our production is zero waste every single last cubic millimeter of the water is even used for for some purpose uh, and then you think about you know mass production where mass production of clothing or fast fashion is the second largest contributor to uh, pollution in the world it's I think number two behind air travel so when you're talking about something like what we do which is custom pieces which is everything is recycled zero waste manufacturing completely closed loop manufacturing you know, the, the byproduct of our manufacturing is the water that's used to plant the trees, which we're about to plant the tree. You think about, like, not only the great products we're making and the people we're making happy and the lives we're changing through the development of the people in our organization, but it's also a gigantic net positive uh, for our environment. So we're really, really proud of every single step in the supply chain of our products. Like, we're making net benefit happen at every single layer in the supply chain, which is great. So what we're doing now, which is amazing, is using the recycled water from the plant to plant a mango tree, yep. a juicy mango tree. Uh, so even long after I'm dead, the ladies can keep enjoying my mangoes. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> okay. You don't need to clap, I'm not a hero. <laughs> my CEO is a hero. Uh, we care about the environmental issues of the planet so much that he, plants the tree with his bare hands, you know, just digging this, this hole in the, in the ground and like putting the tree in and, and, and watering it. Let me tell you something, Henry. A lot of people don't care about, you know, the world, but 
When I think about my employees, I want to leave the planet better for them. You next, Maligan. This is part of our annual employee training where we make our employees do uh, manual labor to make sure that they're strong and healthy. After this, Mama will be milking some cows. Can't wait. When next year I get a mango? Uh, two, two, years. two years. years. Two years. Or three years. Two years. So you can still get two a mango. Years. Once again, Edward's mangoes do not deliver. Yeah. <laughs> Edward. Edward, you want to water your thing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, there hasn't been water since you've been back. <laughs> it's only got watered last time I was here. <laughs> if somebody like leaves you as a client, do you chop down their tree? You're not that cold, I did. Right. Yeah, First of all, let's cheers. There's a lot of people think, you know, being an executive means you don't work hard and you don't, you know, do the hours and stuff. But here we are on a hot summer day having to drink coconuts and be driven around by a chauffeur. You know, for you guys, we do it for you. It's a very hard work. We mm. put... Is my sushi ready? After a couple of intense days visiting the production facilities in Madurai, we flew out to Kolkata to take a look at the production of our bespoke shirts. Some of our bespoke shirts are made here, and in Kolkata we met with Nikhil, who owns the factory that produces some of the finest shirts in the world. Nikhil introduced us to a magnificent new concept. Jugar. Jugar. So what's the concept? Tell, us, tell me what's that concept. Jugar is simple. If you go to do, a, do work A, you figure your way how to do it. This is not complicated. Okay. You find your Jugar. Ways. Yes. You have friends to help you. You'll have strangers to help you. You get to do what you have to do. And you do the shortcut. You might do a shabby job. Might not do as good as you, but you do the job. You know, I think if I had to start a new company again, I would just call it Jugar. Jugar. Like just get yeah. get it done. No, it's only, I, a lot of companies in India call it Jugar. Like if he emails me, I want a shirt for a model in. In 24 hours, we ship yeah. it out. It's Jugar. Okay, anytime I'm working with anyone now and they give me an excuse, I'm like, Jugar. <laughs> That's it. Jugar. A traveler shirt. Oh, wow. Is that a cigar pocket? Oh my god, it's a cigar pocket. Traveler shirt. The guys who travel, the photographers, like this yeah. guy, gentleman. The old days, you would keep reels and you would keep extra lenses and things like that. I would do like cigar, cigar, Cigars, cigar, yeah. cigar. Yeah. <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> like, let's say you come up with this product and say, this is a good product, right? Immediately, I'll order like 10 in different colors uh, for our celebrity clients. I will deliver them and I'll take pictures of our celebrities wearing this. So we, we'll have a very quick, you know. None. So we pay our workers bonus twice a year. My, my challenge is uh, the skills we end up and you don't understand with the workers, it's a, it's a muscle memory. Yes. The skill is a muscle memory. They don't think from here, they think from here. Mm -hmm. So once you get the muscle memory in, you don't want to lose that skill set. So he's, uh, oh, hi, nice to meet you. He's are my Jugara guy. So if I tell him, I, said, I don't care, just do it. Get it done, yeah, yeah exactly. I like that. <laughs> so he manages everything. He has the fusing done, he manages the design. Doing, thanks for doing great work. We're, um, yeah. we, love, we love our products and they're always on time. That's really good. So. Like uh, most of your employees here have been here for a very long time, right? Like 10 years, 15 years. Like How old are the companies? The companies are 10 years old. So they've all been here for like, from the right. beginning for a lot of them. Why do they want to work here? I mean, we do smaller things right. Everybody does the big thing right. We do smaller things right. Yeah. We have. We keep up clean, these things clean. The bathroom is washed every day. It may not sound a big deal to you, but India is a big deal. Yes. The floors are clean, and we listen to them. We listen to them. We don't attack what caused the problem. We attack the problem and work on the solution. We don't go and pick people that it's your fault, get on with it, no. The idea is there's a problem, find a solution, and then figure out not to happen again. Here we have a fabric buying thing, so we're putting together NOS, which means never out of stock collection. So it's for shirts that are never going to go out of stock. Like they're always available for our perennials, and then of course we supplement that with seasonal collections every three months. So here we're feeling fabrics. There's fabrics from England, Italy, all over the world, um, and Mamacon is is responsible for putting the collection together here. 
Yeah, so I'm looking at the, the quality of the fabric and the patterns that are available and uh, selecting the more commercial ones that I see that will be selling and they, our clients will be liking the most. I, I will give the guy a compliment, man. You know, one of the biggest challenges in shirts is that you don't always know what's going to sell and you don't want to overcommit to stock. But then what happens a lot of times is you just don't have enough stock to keep supplied and then clients don't get the things they want. So as we've grown as a company, um, we've made tremendous relationships uh, with suppliers in order to take that risk and invest in us to have more stock so that we can have um, our salespeople and our clients fully equipped and, and permanently equipped, not only with the seasonal collections, but with the perennials that always sell. Um, it's an investment, but, but you know, as we grow as a company, like that's a privilege as well to make that investment. In conclusion, we also learned that we can source some incredible fabrics uh, from the Asian subcontinent because of our connections to Nikhil and his long-standing family business connections, including we were now finally able to find a supplier, very hard to do, for Giza 45 cotton, the finest cotton ever spun. young person wants to know, you know, how do you get a chance to travel around the world and do like a procurement trip or a buying trip? And it's like, that's not an entry level position at all. Because what happens is for the first 10 years, it's like grind, 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 suffer, 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 cry, 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 everything sucks. Uh, and if you're just, you know, just good enough to make it out of that, just to get a little bit out of that rat race, you get a little bit of taste of that. But this isn't first, this is the last. First is like sales and revenue. And then you, you know, can build out from there because you need revenue to survive and grow. Uh, but the nice thing is, once you get to this point, you also make very good decisions very quickly because you really know your business. You really understand your business that you can make good decisions. I can't send a new person here or somebody just likes to travel because they'll make dumb decisions, cost the company money, and, and we've learned the hard way about that. So, you know, if you want to get to these like micro trips, like last month we were in Hong Kong, and then we went to Dubai and India, that's all in the course of a month. I've been to London twice in that same time frame. If you want to get to that point, uh, in your career, you really have to be the best at what you do, become completely indispensable and irreplaceable, and then the, you know, the world opens up to the, just to that small percentage of people, and I really, really hope to see you here. It's awesome. Yeah, our business trips have changed a lot over the years. I would say the first six or seven years, I never stayed at a hotel. It was always one of my employees' floors uh, on an air mattress. We have so many pictures of that. Then it was like, you know, the cheapest thing you can get, an Airbnb. And now, you know, as we grow, um, we're still very principled with how we spend, obviously. But once in a while we go on a trip and we, you know, now I get to stay for two days at a five star. Um, and it's like a very rewarding, humbling feeling to know that, you know, all that hard work and all that trial and tribulation has started to uh, turn into something meaningful. That's amazing. For our employees, like our top salespeople, you know, we take them on these awesome trips around the world. It was Georgia, Tbilisi, and the whole country of Georgia two years ago. Then last year was Croatia. This year we're doing a Mediterranean cruise. So our top people, we treat them extremely well. You know, we send them on trips around the world like this, uh, so that we treat them. In a lot of ways, people in our company by their second, third year are being treated way better than what I experienced starting this company in the first 10 years. And that's also a joy.